So let's just get started. If each of you could just take two minutes, tell us what you do each day, what your main focus is, what's on your mind, what are you, what is the main thing for the last 10 years and up till now that you do, you're focused on, and that you spend your time on in regards to health and lifestyle. Each of you could share, give us a two minute update. Any I'll order start off, I'll, I'll go first. Uh, uh, I, uh, today's a typical day for me. Um, I had uh, my day started off with some you know, review. Of course, I gave a, a, a talk this morning, uh, but my day consists of doing work in my clinical practice. I'm a, a board certified cardiologist trained in internal medicine, cardiology and cardiac electrophysiology. I practice in the Texas Medical Center. It's the world's largest medical center. My background is such that you know, I went through many years of training and became entrenched in the standard way of treating. And, and I became aware of alternative lifestyle therapies well into my private practice. And, and I think God had it such that, you know, I became entrenched in one area and then learned all of this information in terms of plant-based nutrition and other aspects of lifestyle that was very important. Uh, so that I was able to be able to speak that message while being entrenched in this area. So my day-to-day uh, con uh, operations consists of seeing patients in the clinical practice. Uh, we do our own clinical research. We've published our works uh, of, of the data we've seen for thousands of patients over nearly two decades. Um, we do uh, minimally invasive testing in the uh, clinic in our center, uh, just four miles south of the world's largest medical center. And I do some clinical work inside the, the hospital, managing patients with advanced heart disease. And uh, we specialize in utilizing uh, the acute intervention of nutrition and lifestyle methodologies in the acutely ill patient, uh, trying to resuscitate them in many cases, uh, as I've shared with uh, the audience this morning. So that consists of our work, clinical work, uh, clinical research, uh, and uh, also building a, a program uh, for the healthcare center of the future. We have our on-site nutrition center, uh, and uh, we do things like that to help our patients uh, turn their lives around. That concludes my comments. <laughs> go ahead. Anyone next? Anyone who wants? I'm happy to go. I'm Dr. William Lee. I'm the president and medical director of the Angiogenesis Foundation. It's a pleasure to be on this panel with my distinguished friends and colleagues. Um, I'm an internal medicine physician that has been spending the last uh, uh, 25 years really looking at vascular health uh, from the perspective of um, angiogenesis, which is how the body grows blood vessels. Um, blood vessels are a 60,000 mile channel series of networks throughout our body and they deliver oxygen and the nutrients that we eat uh, to pretty much every cell in our body. And I spent um, the majority of my um, career uh, involved with biotechnology and trying to develop um, better medicines uh, to treat blood vessel dependent diseases that range from cancer to diabetic complications, to vision loss, um, and, and cardiovascular diseases, uh, as Dr. Montgomery um, was alluding to. Um, and uh, um, there's about 41 different uh, therapeutics that have emerged out of the work that we've been doing. So it's been very productive. But the science is continuously changing, and so is the burden of disease. Um, about 10 years ago, I began looking at the role of diet um, uh, in health defense systems, including uh, angiogenesis, but also other um, interconnected uh, biological systems of the body, ranging from our stem cells with, for regenerative health, uh, our microbiome, uh, how our DNA protects itself, as well as our immune systems. And uh, that led me to write a book called Eat to Beat Disease. But I'm actively now involved with um, uh, programs at the federal level, uh, trying to um, improve uh, nutrition at the national level but with the USDA, the NIH, um, uh, exploring the um, uh, creation of a more national institute focusing on uh, nutrition. And uh, last year, uh, when the pandemic hit, I sort of jumped into the deep end of the pool and became a COVID researcher, which is a field that had no experts because humans hadn't seen this disease 
previously. And so um, I wound up actually um, being one of the members of the discovery team that found that the um, coronavirus also infects our vascular cells and uh, causes a microvascular disease primarily um, in addition to a respiratory disease, which then explains many of the complications of COVID. So now I'm actually um, collaborating with groups in academia and government, including the FDA, as well as a variety of biotech companies and nutrition institutes as well, looking at how we can help um, uh, reduce risk, uh, help to combat um, uh, the disease itself, and then recover, especially from the syndrome that's known, known as long COVID or uh, post-acute sequelae of COVID or PASC, as it's now being called, because that's a condition that can affect conservatively about 30% of people that have uh, recovered from uh, COVID. So my day is pretty busy um, juggling these 18 wheelers. Dr. Campbell Resselstein. Uh, yeah, I'll take a crack at it. Um, I'm actually uh, now uh, struggling to retire. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm still working now just about as much as I did when I retired, so to speak, 20 years ago, and just published a book just last month. Um, and interestingly, all of these three colleagues of mine uh, endorsed the book, and so it's really a pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, but in any case, I spent most of my time just thinking about how to write something, how to say something regarding the science of nutrition. You know, the, the, the science of nutrition has uh, been badly butchered <laughs> for decades. And uh, I, I often wonder and worry a, a bit about how this, how this happened. Uh, the book that I just finished writing, in fact, with my grandson, um, is really a, a, a question concerning, you know, where did we go wrong as far as nutrition is concerned? I know there's a lot of different kinds of disciplines we think about, of course, in, in the medicine and healthcare, and and uh, I would argue that just the food we put in our mouth and understanding what happens to that food and how all things work together is uh, very pretty critical. Um, and uh, so, not understanding nutrition has its implications for uh, all sorts of uh, non-scientific, if you will, non-biologic, I should say, uh, issues, uh, uh, climate change. Uh, even cost of health care, that sort of thing. So I, I just basically am uh, publishing some papers. I just came out one, since COVID was mentioned, I just came out with one on data from China that we uh, explored some 30 years ago, having to do with the role of nutrition on um, the virus, the hepatitis B virus, as it causes liver cancer. Got some results that were absolutely spectacular in those days. It could not be more prominent, you know, plant foods uh, stimulate antibody formation and prevent uh, the uh, virus from causing liver cancer, which is this basic symptom. Animal foods, in, in, in turn, um, at very low levels, only about 10% on average what we do in the West, it was highly significant related to the production of liver cancer and maintaining an active virus. So I, I've gotten excited about that, writing some more papers and just sort of pointed that out as one, one of the casualties of nutrition since we know so little, it seems like to me, or understand nutrition. When something like this comes along, it seems like nobody's asking questions, to my knowledge. You know, what, what role does nutrition really play in these viruses other than you know, presenting comorbidities, obviously? Uh, but aside from that, what does that have anything to do with this? And I'm excited about telling that story. That's what I do. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're muted. You're muted, we can. How's that, any better? Yes, yes, good, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Esselstyn. I direct the Cardiovascular Disease Prevention and Reversal Program at the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Center for Disease Reversal. Uh, and I guess I'm really very excited to be in the company of a cardiologist because I, uh, I always have a chance to learn so much. I should confess, though I got very interested in cardiovascular disease, uh, my training was as a background as a surgeon, and I was a surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic for 31 years. 
But halfway through my career, I uh, got kind of waylaid because I was so disenchanted uh, with the fact that uh, for no matter how many women I was doing breast surgery, because at that time in the late 1970s and early 80s, I was chairman of the Breast Cancer Task Force. And uh, no matter how many women I was doing surgery for, I was doing absolutely nothing for the next unsuspecting victim. And that led me to do a bit of global research and was quite striking to find that we have known literally, we have known for over a hundred years that there are cult multiple cultures on the planet earth where cardiovascular disease is virtually non-existent. And uh, I just thought there would be more bang for the buck if we could somehow show people how to eat to save themselves from ever having, or, or perhaps if they do have it, reversing their heart disease, that at the same time, we would really have a remarkable decrease in the amount of the Western cancers of breast, prostate, colon, and pancreatic. And I kind of knew we were on the right path when I remember the, I only had about <clears throat> uh, 24 patients in this first group because uh, I was so tied up with my surgical practice, there wasn't time for a large group. But in 1986, I, I knew we uh, were on the right path because there was a gentleman who, uh, walking over the Skyway to my uh, office, he had to stop five times because of pain in his calf muscle because of a partially blocked artery in his thigh. So he went on this uh, rather significant plant-based nutrition that we were sort of borrowing from these other countries without any oil. 10 months later, because I had been so focused on his heart, I totally forgot uh, about his leg. And 10 months into a study, he said to me one day, you know, Dr. Esselstyn, you recall when I first started seeing you, I had to stop five times crossing that skyway to your office. He said, you know, the last month, I don't stop. The pain is gone. So I said, Don, back you go to the vascular lab where we had had an original pulse volume at the very start of his treatment. Now, 10 months later, we repeated the pulse volume with the pain gone and the pulse volume was now double what it was. We now had absolutely rock solid, irrefutable science that food and food alone could halt and reverse this disease. And somebody's gonna say, well, wait a minute. <clears throat> what about those statin drugs? Well, this is 1986. We didn't have any statin drugs. So, uh, I think it's so important for people to recognize that if there are situations where they cannot take those drugs or statins or what have you, they are in no way precluded from enjoying similar benefits provided they follow the, uh, the program uh, appropriately. Thank you.